All right, now we're going to move on to our first exercise worth points, the cartoon jumble, inspired by Arturo Herrera. Here he's using the, the dwarves from uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, and he's mixing and matching their line works to create his own composition. It's very much like hand-done collage, like you can see him doing here, where he uses an X-Acto knife and actually cuts out the line work from different um, coloring books and posters. Let's see. He's got a lot of great examples. He did a wall painting at the Arm & Hammer that's particularly nice. This is fairly low res, but you can see He'll then sometimes recolor the lines with his own choices of color. But we want to do something similar. So we're going to go to a Google image search. And to get to Google images, you can just Google anything and then look for the image option, which is right here for me. Or you can always do a search for images and then you'll find it up at the top of your results. And now we're going to learn how to do smarter image searches. They're a, a huge part of digital art. Now, I started uh, professionally illustrating in the early 90s, well before the internet was what it was today. And standard practice was to keep what's called a morgue of reference files. So if I was asked to do a cartoon about graffiti, I would look in my morgue of files, which were tear outs from newspapers, magazines, posters, for things like street corners and street lamps and brick walls and urban settings. You know, we had folders. Now that's simply a matter of doing a good image search. So if I look for a street corner as a Google image search, not web search, I'll get tons and tons of visual reference, but it's not all the same. So if I wanted to refine my search, I'm going to use what are called my search tools. And the first thing I might want to look for are images that are high enough resolution to actually use digitally and print full size. And for that, we want larger than 10 megapixels. Printers keep getting better. Monitors keep getting better. So resolution needs keep getting higher. Now, something that's larger than 10 megapixels will print at 8 by 10 inches or larger at at least 300 pixels per inch, which is a professional printing standard. Anything fewer than 10 megapixels will not print at its optimal settings. And you'll see I still have lots of things to look at for street corners. Now, how do I actually find out if this is useful information? Well, if I click on it and then I say open in new tab, I can actually see the photo in full resolution. And it's a little bit out of focus, but not bad at all. And so this would work for a compositing project that I wanted to print at professional quality as a component. But look at the difference. If I don't search for larger than 10 megapixels, instead if I just say any size, and I pick something, Let's say I really like this one. I open it in a new tab, I view the full image, that's as large as it gets. I zoom in on it as much as I can, which is to the extent that you would see in a print, and I can see all these artifacts. It looks really blurry, really out of focus, very low resolution, and this would look terrible as a print. And most images online very logically are low resolution because screens are much lower resolution than printing ever needs to be. So these search tools become really important. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to limit our search for size larger than 10 megapixels. And now we're going to pick a creative property that is line based. So I might look for patents, of targets. 
And the US Patent Office has very particular uh, schematic requirements. So anything that's filed with the Patent Office and is uploaded is going to have a similar visual style. And because I search for larger than 10 megapixels, I'm going to click on the ones that interest me and I'm going to open their links in new tabs using my right click. Okay, and then I can go through and view them at full size and I see, yes, this is a bitmap scan. It's high resolution. It's really clean. That will work. I want to use that one. Drag and drop it onto the desktop. There it is. So on and so forth. That one's a little too fuzzy, not scanned as well. Maybe I'll skip that one. This one nice and clean, yes, good. This one nice and clean, good. We need at least five. I think I already got that one which is why I like the right clicking because you can always just go back to your initial search but you want to check the quality visibly before you choose any of them and then you can always go back to your search window and find more if you need to modify your search terms go ahead alright this also will work for any kind of other creative property that's a little too blurry but I like this. Look at this design. It's for a children's museum. It's how to shoot pneumatic uh, balls out of pneumatic tubes with targets. I love looking at patents. All right. This one will work. So I've got more than five. I'm in good, good standing. But let's say I wanted to look up Garfield, something I is my touchstone to, to art. Okay, I get lots of images that are larger than 10 megapixels, but they're not line-based. Patents are nicely line-based. So what's another way I can limit my search? Well, I can go to type, and I can say line drawing. I can go to color, and I can say black and white. I don't see a whole lot of Garfield. But I see a lot of other things. So that tells me that Garfield's community uh, intellectual property is safely guarded from high resolution scans. <laughs> so I might have another idea. Well, let's try Snoopy. It will keep all of those same standards. And sure enough, I got lots of Snoopy. Some of it might be fan art, though, that I might not want to use. It's good to use things that are head to toe, that aren't cropped. And if I need more, I might search for a particular character, like Charlie Brown. See if it gives me something I hadn't seen before. Remember just right clicking and opening them in a new tab so that then you can look at them individually, see the quality of the scan. That one's good. If they redirect you to some other page, like a, a website, that one's not great, though it's got Garfield in it. And Woodstock. And Woodstock, very nice. But I'll pass on that one. Just pass on those that, that redirect you for now. We want to be selective. So just like we were studying the basic shapes before, now we're kind of studying the line quality. And I'd have to do a little bit more. To get five or more images. Oh, I already got that one. So I might look up Woodstock. Now Disney and Looney Tunes are pretty plentiful because lots of industrious parents <laughs> will um, 
scan this stuff, find this stuff, and, and make coloring sheets for kids that are illegal, but very helpful to be able to just print up at high resolution. But anyone that makes their living through images kind of knows not to put anything this high resolution online because there's no reason for it. So we're exploiting uh, ignorance. This is a good artistic skill. All right, I need one more to get five. So I'm going to dig deep. No, I thought that was a long shot. All right. I'll have to be the big one. What I love about searching in this way is you actually get a limit to the search <laughs> results. You know, these are all of them that meet all of these criteria. And then they even have another criteria for search tools, which is usage rights. And if it's labeled for reuse, none of these are, that actually is a way of trying to search for public domain images. But there's not going to be any syndicated press kind of uh, properties under, under free use. All right. So that's the first step, finding reference materials. I'm going to use these patents. The next step is to open them up in Photoshop. So you select them all, all the ones you want to use that you save to your desktop, and you're going to open them up in Photoshop. Right click, say open with Photoshop. Now I can do this and I can start working, but I've got kind of a messy desktop. And so I'm realizing maybe I want to organize this a little bit. I have this exercises folder. I have this basic shapes folder. Now that I've uploaded my basic shape example to PhotoBucket, now I can save these things into the folder. So everything that relates to the basic shapes exercise, let me save to this folder. And that helps clean it up a little bit. So now I'm going to open all of these, my target patents. Open them with Photoshop. They'll open all in tabs. So how do I get them all to be free floating? I go to Window, Workspace, sorry, Window, Arrange, Float All in Windows. Now I see them all. I'm going to use my shortcuts that I've learned. Command minus to shrink them. I want them all to be on the same screen. Drag them around. Some of them are bigger than others, but they're all big enough to print at full resolution. Do they have to be line art? They do have to be line art. Because right. we're going to be isolating and using just the black lines. And then we'll be replacing the black lines with our own color choices. So once you can see all of them on, on the screen, And I'll come around and help you get to this step. You have to decide what, what is your anchor image. You're going to modify everything about them except for one image you're going to use as your foundation to build upon. And the one that's kind of exciting and already at an interesting angle is, for me, this one. So this is going to be my anchor image. So I'm going to make that one bigger. And I'm going to drag using the move tool, which is the very top of our tools. I'm going to drag these files onto this file as new layers. So you'll see that the layers start to stack up. Just dragging and dropping. You need at least five. I have more than five here. Once you've done that, and now I have one file with six different layers, a background layer and then five additional layers, then I can close these individual files. And it won't even ask me to save them because I haven't done anything to them. 